we shall now go on to our next speaker our next speaker thank you madam extremely brilliant and versatile surgeon from meghur eye care center has uh, uh, dr deepak uh, could you start sharing your screen who heads the cataract and uh, glaucoma sub specialty he is a keen academician and has had an amazing set of awards watching his video will tell us again how amazing he can be so let's hear from him on to you dr deepak hi uh, i'm dr deepak meghu and today i'll be sharing with you a case about a 70 year old man who had sustained blunt trauma many years back now he has an intermittent cataract with around 3 to 4 clock hours of zonal dehiscence so i begin my case by doing two small paracentesis at this stage i'm not to sure if it's vitreous prolapse or not uh, i'm using trepan blue as the less possible to stain the uh, anterior capsule at this moment i see there is some amount of uh, trepan blue which is increasing out from the area of the zonal dehiscence yeah. and i become suspicious and i'm now injecting a diluted trastuzumab to check for the presence of vitreous and as you can see there is a tongue shaped uh, vitreous which is prolapsing from the area of the zonal dehiscence So the first thing to do in such a scenario is to ensure that we do antivitrectomy and remove all the prolapsing vitreous. We can't proceed with the vitreous prolapsing out like this. So using a very low flow rate and high cut rate, I am doing antivitrectomy to ensure that the vitreous is cleared off. The high cut rate and very low flow rate ensure that we don't cut the iris in the anterior capsule and they are prevented from damage. I am plugging that area of zonal dehiscence by using a dis. Passive OVD. Under this, I'm using a cohesive OVD. Push back the anterior capsule so that I can get a rexus done easily. But during rexus, I realized that the rest of the zonules are quite healthy. The capsule rexus could be torn quite easily. I'm aiming to do a rexus of about 4.5 to 5 millimeter. The smaller rexus is going to help me to achieve optic capture if the need arises. and the rest of the zonules look to be quite healthy in this situation so the excess is completed capsule hook to engage that area with the zonal dehiscence i'm making another side port to introduce my chopper again i'm using dispersive ovary to block that area so now i'm implanting the ct i always support the ring with my left hand using a sinski hook and the last part of the ring is dialed in by using another sinski hook and my strategy is to do a direct chop So once I bury the phaco tip into the nucleus, uh, I'm trying to chop the nucleus and realize that it's quite dense. My right hand is stable, and I'm just trying to use my left hand to separate the nucleus and try to break the posterior fibers. Again, the strategy is here to keep my right hand stable and try to separate the fragment using the left hand. The difficulty in eyes with these loose backs is that you don't have the counter traction, which is so helpful in separating them because the tensile strength of the bag is not much here. So it is now the final two fragments are emulsified quite easily. White plaque which are seeing behind the posterior capsule actually is the vitreous which has stained with the the trastuzumab strip which we had used, and we can see there is still some amount of vitreous being collapsed to that area. At this point, I thought the best way to tackle this is by using by using a pass plan approach because we can access the vitreous from behind and then do decent antivitrectomy. So three millimeter from the limbus, I make a sclerotomy using AMVR plate just. behind my steril tunnel incision which I had created and again using my 23g cutter and infusion through the uh, anti chamber paracentesis i proceed to do a limited anterior vitrectomy care is taken that i remove all the vitreous which is there adjacent to the area of the zonal dehiscence and also i'm cautious that i don't damage the posterior capsule so just enough to ensure that it doesn't prolapse through the zonal dehiscence at this stage i'm closing my sclerotomy using an a2 vitrol now is the time to implant the lens i'm using sodium hyaluronate to create some space the plan again is to implant the multi piece lens with the haptic in the sulcus and then trap the lens behind the excess margin to achieve an optic capture So first it's important and critical that we go back behind the lens and remove the OVD which we have used it once the sodium hyaluronate is removed now we need to tuck the lens back posteriorly 
And once it is done, you can see there is some amount of a vitreous which is again prolapsed through that area. I'm using my vitrector to do vitrectomy, and you can see the ovalization of the rexus, which is suggest to the fact of the optic capture. I think, yeah, uh, that's it. The case is done, and the patient eventually did well. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. <clears throat> That was a wonderful Amazing. doctor, uh, uh, Fantastic. Now, Very nice. So I think, uh, Chitra, you should ask him uh, one first thing is that what is the recorder that he's using to record? Exactly. Amazing. 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 I have quite a few questions for you and I'm sure Harshul has too and I want the expert panel also to be involved. You, since you mentioned that the rest of the zonules were healthy, you could have just probably kept the capsule hooks alone and done the surgery and then later place the CTR because of the, your nucleus was quite bulky. What were your thoughts on that? Excellent question, madam. The reason for putting the CTR early was I thought it's going to tamponate that area also. We get a 360 degree stretch of the capsular back. So I was betting on the fact that by putting the CTR, the consistent prolapse of the transzonular vitreous can be minimized and also the fluid from the anterior side uh, going transzonularly into the posi segment and causing uh, uh, pushing the bag forward that could be minimized that is the reason for introducing the ctr early stabilization of the bag could be very well achieved by the uh, hook itself but the idea of putting the ring early was these two concerns to prevent uh, prolapse of the transzonular vitreous and also to prevent the fluid from the anterior segment entering behind the lens causing uh, fluid yeah. direction yeah. the two reasons for inserting the ring early yes good logic but yeah. since it's again a non-progressive uh, focal zonular weakness, couldn't you have thought of keeping the IUL in the bag itself so that the haptic also stretches that area? Yeah, that's a good valid yeah. point. That's a valid point. It could have done either way. It's uh, uh, optic catch is not, was not a compulsory thing here. But at that moment, I thought that would be a better option. So it was my uh, personal choice. How old was the patient, Deepak? Uh, he was uh, 72 years. 72 years. Yeah. Any specific site for doing a pass plane of vitrectomy? I see one, I noticed that you did a scleral tunnel in this case. Do you do a scleral tunnel for all these complicated cases? Yeah, in this case, I was expecting to go transonular because there was a subluxated lens and I needed to do vitrectomy. So I choose this area because it was easier for me to access the area where the zonal dehiscence was there. My So that was the reason I chose a superior quadrant and best posterior to that, I had the congenital flap ready to do that. The only thing I uh, beg to differ from you was doing vitrectomy, I felt that you could have kept your irrigation away from the area of uh, zonal awakeness. Yeah. yeah, but I was sitting the I was sitting in that chose that quadrant. So I, I was I'm a right-handed surgeon. So I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, that's one point I could have. Oh, that area, no, that would have hydrated the vitreous more in that area. That's the only. Dr. Deepak, deep. what was the indication for uh, the vitrectomy through the parcel? I wasn't able to understand that little bit over there. Yeah, okay. because uh, even after doing the, I was not able to. I was not able to clear the entire transonular vitreous. It was still prolapsing even after putting the. So seat. you know. After doing this, so. Right. You know, what I thought is that you were seeing the translon which had stained the vitreous, which was retrolenticular vitreous, and you don't really need to remove it because it'll no, get no, absorbed. So you know, fiber which was coming out into the side port, people yeah. were speaking, so it was documented. Coming out. So you were not able to clear it completely. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Whenever in doubt, my past pain is beautiful. And right. also, I wanted to know, Deepak, why you removed the capsular hooks a little earlier? Uh, no, I, it, it was looking very stable and fine. So it was just disengaging. So I just removed it. That's the only thing. It's not you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to avoid putting the CTR, you can use a, use a expanded capsular hook. You know, like the MST kind. Then you don't have that fear of the vitreous coming through because yours was like the single one. If you have an expanded tip, it works like a CTR in that area. You know? Or the Shanks uh, modification. Wonderful video, Harshul. Do you have anything yes. else? To no, I am just totally mesmerized by his surgery, sir, ma'am. We know he's a great surgeon. He produces some great videos. Yes. And I think uh, everybody should learn how to, you know, tackle these kind of cases in a stepwise manner in which Dr. Deepak has shown. Wonderful videos, Dr. Deepak. Wonderful. Everybody should uh, learn only how thing to is, make videos. As Chitra ma'am said, I would have implanted lens in Deepak. capsular bag. Only thing which yeah, yeah I also defer. Deepak, Otherwise, you can still tell us about your, about your recorder. Yeah. Yes, recorder, you have not told us and three cheers to you. <laughs> you keep your secret. You have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube. My YouTube channel it has it already. 